Hello, Brad Bob here, Bob Financial, and I want to talk about something really important today, and that is expenses within TSP versus the industry, okay? So expenses in TSP versus expenses at other custodians, all right? And we're just, there's a lot of custodians, but I'm just going to look at the, what I would call the three biggest ones, and maybe they're not exactly the biggest, but Vanguard, Fidelity, Schwab are three of the biggest, okay? Um, Schwab has bought TD Ameritrade recently, so that's made them even bigger. But um, when people get to retirement and they're talking about whether or not to keep money in TSP versus moving it to an IRA, a lot of times what I hear is TSP is so cheap, I just, I can't. I can't move my money. I can't afford to move it because TSP is so cheap. Why would I do that? Well, is that true? And, and I'm going to get to the answer here soon. Now, 10 years ago, was that true? Yeah, it probably was. Um, but is it today? Uh, I'd say not so much. Um, but let's look and see, okay? So what I've got here is it just a number of websites. I got a spreadsheet I put together. And, and what I'm going to start with is TSP, okay? If you want to look at TSP expenses, just go straight to TSP.gov, and it'll show you what you want to know. So I've got three funds highlighted here. That's the F fund, the C fund, the S fund. And it'll tell you the objective, okay, which each of them, each of these is trying to match an index, really. You're looking at the S&P 500 index or the U.S. aggregate bond index or the U.S. completion total stock market index for the S fund. And you can scroll down here and, and get to the bottom where it shows you total expense ratio, all right? And I'm just looking at individual funds. Life cycle funds are just a combination of your five funds, okay? So um, we're just going to look at individual funds. We just saw those. The F fund, the expense ratio is 0.058. Uh, so if you want to find a comparison, okay, one easy way to do it. So I'm looking at the expense ratios today, which they may change tomorrow, all right? But today, um, you can look up... Where did I do that? ETS price accounts right here. So I just typed in Vanguard aggregate bond index ETF. Okay. And what pops up is BND right here. So I'm going to go to my spreadsheet here. Um, BND says expense ratio right here, 0 0.03. That's coming from Vanguard's website. So on my spreadsheet, Vanguard, BND, 0.03% expense ratio, okay, versus the F fund, 0.058, all right? Now, all, all these expense ratios are low, so 0 0.03, 0 0.058, not a big difference. However, to say that the F fund, you know, the TSP is cheaper, that's, that's not looking very accurate here. Then we look at Schwab, 0 0.03. We look at Fidelity, 0 0.025, okay? And some of these over here may be ETFs, some may be mutual funds. Um, they're similar, okay? Biggest difference between a mutual fund and ETF is that a mutual fund, you put your order in, kind of like you do TSP. You, you put your order in earlier in the day, and then it's processed at the end of the business day, okay? That's when the purchase or sale is made. Um, sale, sell. Uh, so it's done at the end of the day. ETFs, you can go on and buy and sell an ETF like you can a stock, okay? So that can be bought and sold during the day, all right? That's the biggest difference between the two. A um, lot of similarities. So how about C-Fund, okay? Let's look at the C-Fund. C-Fund, S&P 500 index, 0 0.043 for your C fund, 0 0.03 Vanguard, 0 0.03 Schwab, 0 0.015 Fidelity. Uh, I fund, how's that look? Okay, we got 0 0.053 here. And then we look at Vanguard, Schwab, Fidelity. Here is the first spot where we have one higher than what TSP is, okay? And that's Schwab's International Equity ETF, 0 0.06, so it's 0 0.007 percent higher than TSP. Very, very minimal. And the rest are lower, okay? And then we go down here for the to look at the S fund. The S fund 0 0.059 and comparing it, we got 0 0.06, okay? So that's the second spot that we have one that's 
higher and very, very marginally higher, 0.001% higher than TSP. The other two, they're cheaper. Okay, so I think we can tell by looking at these that they're not, uh, other custodians are not more expensive than TSP. In fact, to the contrary. You'd, uh, by looking at this, you would have to say that all three of these, if you aggregate expense ratios, are going to be lower than what TSP is. Um, over here, is, and then you can get other, a big benefit of other custodians is you can get other investments. Like here's one, um, you know, I just looked up ETS on Fidelity. Well, they've got one right here that's uh, an iShares S&P Total U.S. Stock Market ETF. Okay, so I believe with that it, that you can get um, large cap, mid cap, and small cap all in one ETF, so you don't have to worry about buying multiple funds like C fund and S fund. Um, you can get that all in one just to make your life simpler. So you can get other things um, at these other custodians. Uh, now, Another thing or two, so when you're looking at expenses, there's more than just an expense ratio, a fund or ETF expense ratio, right? Um, you also have things like custodial fees and transaction fees. So a custodial fee is a fee that you just pay the custodian for holding the account. And, and there's still some custodians that charge those fees, uh, but they're typically anywhere from $20 a year to $50 a year. Uh, but I, I don't think any of these three major ones charge custodial fees anymore. In fact, the bigger custodians, I'm not aware of one that charges fees. So I just went to Schwab's website here, it comes up fees and commissions, and then you got account fees and minimum. So brokerage, just an individual or joint account, opening and maintenance fee, zero. Uh, IRA, traditional, Roth, which is what it would be if money's coming from TSP, and that's zero, okay? So these fees, you can go on the websites and you can find out if they have those fees. But most of them that I've seen, no custodial fees. So that's, um, that's the same as TSP. Pretty sure TSP does not charge a custodial fee either. Um, then you've got transaction fees. So TSP does not charge you a fee to do a transaction, to sell some of the C fund and buy some of the S fund, okay? Um, these custodians have their ETFs and stocks. So um, pretty much all their ETFs or their stocks are transaction fee free, okay? So right here, listed stocks and ETFs, zero online commission, okay? Which means it does not charge you anything to buy or sell ETFs, okay? So no transaction fee. Um, now, some of them may have a fee for mutual funds, buying and selling mutual funds, but an exception to that is typically if you are buying or selling one of their proprietary funds, okay? So each one of those custodians we talked about, Schwab, Vanguard, Fidelity, if you buy funds at their, if you hold money with them, for example, Vanguard, and you buy a Vanguard index fund and you, you buy that fund, Vanguard does not charge you a fee for buying their funds, okay? If you buy, buy a mutual fund other than one that is theirs, then they may charge you a transaction fee for that. So as far as, far as that goes, um, you gotta say that those fees are less at custodians as well. Um, because if you're really gonna compare it all, um, if you just found the five ETFs or mutual funds at each of them, you're probably not gonna have a transaction fee for those. Um, and again, right here, it says, um, you know, it tells us zero online commission, boom, zero online commission for listed stocks and ETFs. Okay. So you don't have that. Uh, but if we're going to compare it all together, we'd have to look at the TSP mutual fund window where you do have access to other funds. And for what I've seen from those, they look relatively high. Uh, so, I don't, uh, I haven't delved into a ton of details there since the first one or two that I saw, but I recall seeing that, uh, recall from what I saw that those fees for buying funds there are higher than what they are at other custodians. So if you just had an IRA at Schwab, Vanguard, Fidelity, something like that. Um, so 
that I think covers it. You can get into other stuff like, you know, you see here money transfer fees. Um, typically, if you transfer money out of TSP IRA or an IRA, you're typically not going to have a fee there. Um, but then you can run into like wire fees or some stuff like that. But I, I, I'm going to say that all things known from what we know of expense ratios, you know, we just looked at expense ratios of the four funds here. Um, you notice I don't have the G fund on here because it's, it's hard to find equivalent to the G fund somewhere else. It's just, we can't do it. Um, that's the one thing that's unique within TSP, but, um, please. Let's not say the TSP is cheaper anymore, okay? Because it's not. From what we've seen here, looking at expense ratios, custodial fees, transaction fees, the bottom line is, if you want the lowest cost custodian, TSP is not it. You can find a lower cost custodian. And I'm not saying cost should be the main or you know single driving factor in your decision on whether or not to leave money in TSP. It definitely is a factor that you need to consider, but yet there's other things to consider too. And I've got other videos talking about that. But um, if you're looking just at cost, TSP is not the lowest, okay? Each of these custodians that we, we looked at, their expense ratios here, um, their expense ratios overall are lower. Generally speaking, they're lower, okay? You've got the one or two exceptions here, right here, 0.053 to 0.06. 0.059 to 0.06, very, very marginal, where they're cheaper in places like right here, 0.058 to 0.03, okay? So, that's all I have. Um, appreciate your thoughts. Any questions, let me know. Thanks.